Welcome to Ivy Madison. Thank you guys for being here with us today. We've got Harvard men's basketball head coach Tommy Yamaker, Bryce Aiken, and Noah Kirkwood. We'll have a microphone circulated for questions throughout the press conference. Please state your name and your media affiliation when asking your question. We'll have an opening statement from coach, followed by questions for our student athletes, and we'll finish with questions for coach. Yes, thank you. Um, what, what another uh, tremendous uh, Ivy game. Uh, I think our season uh, has been this way all year with uh, so many hard-fought, tough, competitive games. Uh, Penn is an outstanding, outstanding team, and um, we, we had, our, had to do everything we could to make winning plays to win the game. I didn't think we played uh, particularly well, um, but I thought we were tough, and I thought we had to make winning plays to win, and these two guys in particular were, were terrific in making some big-time plays for our team. So I thought the difference for us was at the foul line and certainly on the backboard. Uh, which we needed to have every single one of those uh, those numbers to, to win here this afternoon. We'll start with questions for our student athletes. Now that it's over, um, you can talk about it freely, I'm assuming, but what feelings did you actually have coming into this game, especially with the way last season ended? And was there any importance? A little loud, please. A little uh, louder. Is the mic on? Or? A little louder. Tick, tick. Um, now that it's over, um, I'm sure you can talk about it a little bit more freely, but what feelings did you carry in this game uh, the, with the way last season ended, and how did that carry over to this game? And it, did it take a while to just settle into the fact that it was still just a basketball game? Uh, you know, we had a tough loss to them last year at this point in the season, but I think it was a championship. Uh, so, you know, you know, we kind of felt like we owed them one, but uh, we weren't too caught up on, you know, on the game itself. We just wanted to come out here and get this win, you know, regardless of who was in front of us. Uh, every man contributed to the game, you know, played a big part. Teammates played terrific. They, they picked up my slack all day. But, uh, you know, we obviously were, you know, it, it hurt having that loss last year. So we just wanted to come out here and get the win in advance. Jonathan Tannenwald from the Philadelphia Inquirer. Bryce, when you hit the three over Antonio Woods, did you feel like you had this thing? Um, how, how much? Time was on the clock, did you know? About three minutes left. Uh, no, no, we didn't. No, not at all. <laughs> it was a tough game. We've been grinding it out. Uh, you know, I made a, uh, a tough shot, ones that I usually take. I'm confident in doing so. My teammates trust me. But uh, no, absolutely not. You know, it was three minutes left, and, you know, it was an up and down game. And, you know, we knew we had, there was still time on the clock, so we had to buckle down on defense, get stops, and, you know, still make plays on offense and convert on our free throws. This is something you've done a lot this year, but the 12 you provided off the bench. Um, just how do you feel about that role and especially what it was able to contribute in this environment um, when you needed it, especially in that first half? Yeah, it was great. Um, I think we started off kind of slow, so we needed some um, extra energy, especially from the bench. So for us to play, not our starters not playing as well, and then uh, getting guys like off the bench that are hitting shots that kind of c carried us over. And then in the second half, I thought we did a better job doing that. So. No, I didn't realize that. I've done that before uh, a couple other times. But I mean, I guess that was a good ball fake. And if I even <laughs> faked out uh, Juzang, so. Uh, Mir Mamdani, Harvard Crimson. Noah, you know, a lot of your teammates have been in the tournament before. It's your first time. like. Big couple free throws and a three-pointer uh, in sequence. How do you, you know, is it just another game, or are you, how are you able to kind of block out the noise of, of you know, what what is your your biggest college game to date, and just kind of play it like it's a regular game? Yeah, for sure. I mean, my approach is the same. Uh, I wouldn't change my approach depending on the game. So for me, mentally, I felt like I was fine. And then I have great teammates like Bryce and a lot of the upperclassmen, especially that kind of guided me and were telling me kind of the ropes of how these kind of games go on with the shorter warm-ups, all that stuff. So I felt prepared even before I even stepped on the floor. So to have that kind of support made everything easy. David Cordova, Dave's joint. Um, my question is for the players. The bench, they seem kind of energetic. Did, um, did their energy, basically, did you guys feed off their energy? Oh, absolutely. Every game we do. Uh, you know, the, we have the crowd, we have our bench. Uh, you know, it's a total team effort. So, you know, when they're up and, up and rowdy, we're, we're definitely feeding off it. And, and it helps us tremendously. You know, we feed off it. Uh, and we needed it today. It was much needed. Uh, Steve Hugh of Boston Herald. Uh, you guys have played in so many close games this season. Uh, how much 
did that confidence kind of carry carry over into into today when it was getting close at the end? Yeah, I mean, almost every game has been a close game for us, so I feel like this is just what we're used to now, and we feel like we have that. I think we've come up on the positive end of things on a lot of close games. I think that's just a testament to our will and our um, and our trust in each other to keep on going. Obviously, we have a guy beside me that's hit some big time shots to to carry us over as well, but. I felt like we were never worried that uh, even though it was a close game, we were never scared. So that experience had helped us a lot. Bryce, I know you guys have played in plenty of big games against hostile crowds against Yale in this building before. And I'm sure at this moment, you don't quite care who you play tomorrow. But is the nature of the opponent tomorrow going to change how you guys approach things? In no, absolutely not. You know, it's a championship game in an Ivy League tournament. And we're playing for a bid. So regardless of, you know, who it is, Princeton or Yale, you know, we're coming with the same approach. Any final questions for our student athletes? Bryce, you've had like a couple of situations, like you've had a lot of like emotional finishes in these, in these tournaments. Um, I'm curious, like what happens? How do you feel about this one? Because you know the first one you were in went a certain way. Last year, obviously, came for two. Like, what did you? What approach did you take into this one about how you feel, how you manage it? Um, you know, approaching this season has been tough. Uh, you know, obviously coming off an injury, but. You know, I don't dwell on the past at all. I can't do that. You know, it's not fair to me. It's not fair to my teammates, you know, to bring that into the current day. But, uh, you know, we all approach the game the same way, uh, you know, regardless of the, the opponent in front of us. Uh, and we know what's at stake. So, you know, regardless of what happened in the past, I don't really dwell on that myself. I just know the severity of the situation. We you know we're just coming out here and trying to get these wins in advance. Thank you to our student athletes. They'll take you back to your locker room. Thank you. Thank you. And we'll open up for questions for Coach Ambaker. Uh, Amir Mamdani, Howard Crimson. Uh, yeah. Coach, you know, if you look at the box score, four, four points for JB, nine for Jurchich, I don't really think that that, would you say that, like, you know, you always talk about bench and balance. Can you just talk about how they were you know, in there playing those late crunch time minutes, fighting for rebounds, just their impact on the game? Well, we, I mentioned earlier, and I certainly mentioned to our team uh, in the post game um, comments I had to our, our ball club after I congratulated them, I told them that. They all had to make winning plays uh, for us to win this afternoon, and uh, I love that. You know that, that we have guys that can uh, find a way to have an impact without necessarily making a game-winning shot. And I thought just Justin's minutes were huge, coming off the bench for us, being injured, and coming back and finding his way a little bit more each game. He made a great draw, uh, drive and draw and drive and kick to one of his teammates. I think it was uh, I think it was Noah uh, in front of our bench, and so. Some of those plays may not, you know, you may not look at those things as highlight plays, but uh, we as coaches and um, we recognize the winning plays that our kids have to make. And Danilo was, was big as well. Coach uh, Henry Zhu, Harvey Crimson. Yeah. Um, I, I saw today um, in terms of matching up against Broder that you experimented with kill catchings and yeah. it seemed to work pretty well. Um, can you just talk about <laughs> well, that I don't know. experiment? Uh, <laughs> but Broder's really good. And, and, um, I th you know, he uh, appears to be the heart and soul of their team in terms of how they play through him. And uh, he's very tough to defend. And we tried. And we had to mix different types of players on him. You know, Lewis being a bigger, stronger. Kale being uh, a little smaller, but has uh, great base and balance and, and quickness and is a big time athlete. So we had to try different people. Um, and I'm not sure that anything really worked, but uh, I thought the ways that we had to mix and match things. I think gave our kids, uh, one, a break, and, and then two, the confidence that we can go to different players and, uh, and try it. And I, I thought that they really embraced that and gave us certainly enough of what we needed here this afternoon. Yeah, we're right there. Okay. yeah nothing. Jonathan. Nothing. Jonathan. Jonathan. Tommy, when, when Penn came out and hit you guys right on the nose, right out of the gate, yeah. what did you do to to settle your team and, and get them going on the right track because you know their their team their fans all seem to be you know all going well, in the same direction. Yeah, uh, and they did play very well as you mentioned and um, put us on our heels, uh, so to speak. And I I thought we settled in. Uh, I thought we ran better offense. I, I thought at the beginning we weren't moving. Sometimes that the emotion and the adrenaline and the energy you know can zap you by the time the game is pit you know the ball is pitched up and. Uh, we kind of were standing on offense, and that's not the way that we play. We run a passing game offense, and we want people to be involved. And 
we share the ball and we move the ball. And I thought after we settled in there, I thought we started to do that better and certainly helped us to, to feel better about ourselves. And, and the game is always, a, is basketball usually is a game of runs. And you know they've made theirs at the beginning. We came back with another one. They made other runs. And uh, we we're fortunate that obviously the, the last run that we had was, was the closing run to win. Tommy, Mike Jensen, Philadelphia yeah, Inquiry. Yeah. Uh, and I, I guess this is more of a, a Penn question than a Harvard question, but I mean, you talk about needing to have composure and be, and, and be tough. Is that, is that sort of baked into four years of going up against Woods and Rothschild and Silpy? Very, very tough players. Uh, I mentioned that to those kids in the, when we shook hands going down the line to uh, congratulate each, each other. And um, uh, they are tough. Um, and I, I think they've been a, a tough-minded group. Uh, they've made big shots, big plays, and won big games. And certainly, I, I would uh, attribute those words to those kids. Uh, tough, tough players and winning players. Final question. Coach, you know, Lewis was sitting on the bench for, you know, five, ten minutes down the stretch. Just Kale was playing very well, and then he came out with four fouls. And Lewis comes in, impacts a bunch of shots. What does yes. that say about his ability to, you know, Reset, not worry about his minutes, not worry about his role on the team. Well, Amir, that, that says everything about our, our program and the culture, and I'm proud of that. You know, that's something that we work hard at in terms of uh, understanding that um, we, we're going to need everyone. And not sure how it's going to play out, but we need to have your, you need to have your spirit in the right place. Uh, and when Lewis came back in, I mentioned that in the locker room as well, that I thought a few of the blocks he had were big blocks late down the stretch for us, that uh, he was rested, he was ready. Um, and he contributed in the ways of making the winning plays we, we needed. So I'm glad you pointed that out. Thank you. Thanks, Coach, for your time. Thank the you. locker room will be open here, and uh, we'll have the pen men here shortly. Thank you.